a very good morning to all of you so i welcome you all for this uh, engineering thermodynamics course so the today's uh, classroom discussion topic is uh, to discuss about the entropy as well as the clausius inequality so what is the motivation so why we have to study this particular concepts of entropy as well as the clausius inequality so it is uh, very essential to know that how second law of thermodynamics defines entropy concept and whether a process is feasible or not according to the clausius inequality because uh, whenever we are discussing about the fundamental concepts of the thermodynamics i have already told you that the thermodynamics deals with the three different types of the e's first one is the energy that is uh, given by the first law of thermodynamics second one is the equilibrium that is given by the zeroth law of thermodynamics and the third important one is the entropy now that is given by the second law of thermodynamics now in this class we have to know about uh, the importance of the entropy and similarly the clausius inequality and uh, the this particular lecture is also having the outcome so that is after completion of this lecture we should be able to discuss about uh, the concept of entropy and clausius inequality so let let us see so there is uh, there is no uh, proper definition for the entropy it is very very difficult to define the entropy so normally we can uh, define the entropy in such a way that entropy is a measure of molecular disorderness so the disorderness is closely associated with entropy concept so or molecular randomness disorderness or randomness so that is what entropy is that is the entropy is basically measures the molecular disorderness or molecular randomness so as a system becomes more disordered the positions of the molecules will become less predictable and the entropy value always increases the entropy of a substance is lowest in the solid phase and highest in the gaseous phase it is very very important one so entropy of a substance is lowest in the solid phase and highest in the gaseous phase due to the molecular disorderness so next one is how can we uh, define entropy and what is the formula for the entropy so ds is equal to delta q by t that is the formula for the entropy that is from this from this particular formula we are able to define entropy in such a way that it is the ratio of the change in heat transfer to the absolute temperature the change in heat transfer to the absolute temperature so from this we can find out the units of the entropy also because the units of heat transfer is the joules or kilojoules and the units of absolute temperature is the kelvin so that we can have the units for the entropy is equal to either joules per kelvin or kilojoules per kelvin but whenever uh, we are uh, talking about the specific entropy that is entropy per unit mass so specific entropy units will become joules per kg kelvin or kilojoules per kg kelvin so like that uh, we are able to define the entropy so here the total entropy of an isolated system will never decreases will never decrease that is entropy of an isolated system always increases for an irreversible process or it will remain constant for a reversible process but it never decreases if the entropy of an isolated system is decreasing it is violating the second law of thermodynamics that we have to remember so these are the important points related to the entropy so what is the entropy principle so this is my entropy principle that is ds always greater than or equal to delta q by t so this is the very very important one that is ds is always greater than delta q by t for an irreversible process ds is equal to delta q by t for a reversible process ds is less than delta q by t it impossible it is violating the second law of thermodynamics and for a reversible process delta q by t will becomes zero so ds will be equal to zero for a reversible process that is s1 is equal to s2 so entropy will remain constant during a reversible adiabatic process because adiabatic reversible process means delta q is equal to zero so automatically ds will be equal to zero so ds is equal to zero means s2 minus s1 is equal to zero so s1 is equal to s2 so that's why here we are able to say that for a reversible process the entropy of the universe always will remains constant 
and coming to the irreversible process always it is increases so whenever it is decreasing means it is violating the second law of thermodynamics so in the first slide i have uh, told you that entropy is basically dealing with the disorderliness of the molecules or the randomness of the molecules so just you can see this schematic diagram so it is uh, properly ordered and now it is is a randomness is a disorderliness of the molecules are basically there in this particular schematic diagram so it is the spontaneous expansion of a gas that is also one of the example for the entropy so just it is just you are having the one mole of the gas is there and here it is the closed one and it is evacuated and whenever it is open so automatically this particular gaseous molecules will try to fill this evacuated space that is out of one mole so it is occupying 0.5 mole and 0.5 mole that is the entropy value is increases for any spontaneous processes which are taking place in the universe so the same thing the entropy increases due to the expansion of a gas that is you take any spontaneous processes or the actual processes which are taking place or in all those particular applications entropy always increases that is the entropy of an isolated system is always increases so here whenever the stopcock is open so that is the disorderliness of the molecules is always increases more distributions of the particles are also possible so due to which the entropy value always increases so i already told you that for a reversible process ds is equivalent to delta q by t and for a reversible adiabatic process this is equivalent to zero so zero by t is nothing but zero so ds is equivalent to zero s1 is equivalent to s2 so that's why isentropic process is also known as a reversible adiabatic process why we can call it the reversible adiabatic process as isentropic process because just now from this equation we are able to predict here so whenever you are having the reversible adiabatic process adiabatic means there is no heat transfer so delta q is equivalent to zero so q reversible will be equivalent to zero so automatically delta s also will be equivalent to zero so s1 is equivalent to s2 so that is isentropic so that is entropy will remain same so in which case it is possible so it is possible only in the reversible adiabatic process so the how can we find out the entropy change of the universe so because we studied that uh, universe is nothing but is the summation of the system and surroundings so delta s universe is always equal to delta s systems plus delta s surrounding so it is always greater than zero for an irreversible process so the same thing here we are able to compare so delta e system plus delta s surroundings is equal to universe it is equal to zero and the total entropy value is always greater than zero that is the entropy principle so then coming to the second point that is a clashes inequality so what clashes inequality says and here in the second uh, uh, output of my lecture or in the motivation also i told you that if you want to find out a particular process is feasible or not how can we predict so that is possible only according to the clashes inequality so now according to the clashes inequality we can say that so this particular the given problem is possible or impossible so that is the clashes inequality says that the cyclic integral of delta q by t is always less than or equivalent to zero so it is equivalent to zero for a reversible process and it is less than zero for an irreversible process and whenever it is greater than zero it is impossible and it is violating the second law of thermodynamics so that is the clashes inequality so now let us see one problem based on the clashes inequality now i already told you that so if you want to find out whether a given problem or a given application is possible or not so how can we find out so let us take one example so 300 kilojoules per second of heat is supplied at a constant fixed temperature of 290 degrees centigrade that is the t1 value is given always you write down the given data so t1 is equal to 290 degrees centigrade and q1 because it is the heat supplied so q1 is equal to 300 kilojoules per second the heat rejection takes place at 8.5 degrees centigrade so it is a t2 value so t1 value t2 value given and similarly the q1 value is also given and now the following results were obtained so these are the heat rejection values because he has given the three heat rejection values so in which case you are able to obtain the reversible process or irreversible process and impossible results so that is asking so that is for the three cases now we have to find out 
and we know that the Clausius inequality says that cyclic integral of delta q by t. So if it is equivalent to zero, we can say that it is a reversible process. If it is less than zero, we can say that it is an irreversible process. If it is greater than zero, we can say that it is impossible. So now just you follow the same reasoning whenever you are calculating the three different uh, values. So let us consider the first case. So in the first case, he has given that the heat rejected value is 215 kilojoules per second. So cyclic integral of delta Q by T says that is a Q1 by T1 minus Q2 by T2. So how much amount of the heat is supplied is a 300, it is a Q1. So Q1 by T1 because the T1 value has given as a 290. So it, because it is in the Celsius, always you have to convert the temperature values into the absolute temperature values that is in the Kelvin. So always you have to add with the 273. So 300 by 290 plus 273 that is giving us Q1 by T1 minus Q2 by T2. So what is the value of the heat rejection? 215 by T2. So what is the sink temperature he has given? 8.5 convert into Kelvin plus 273. So find out its value. So its value is minus 0.2309. So what Clausius inequality says cyclic integral of delta Q by T if it is less than 0 it is giving us irreversible process. So since it is less than 0 we can say that it is irreversible process. Now similarly you consider the second heat rejection. Second heat rejection is 150 kilojoules per second. So Q1 by T1 value in all the three cases will remain same because the Q1 and the T1 values are remain same. So that's why just you observe here Q1 by T1, Q1 by T1, Q1 by T1 there is no change in all the three cases. The only thing is that Q2 that is the denominator value only changes in all the three cases. Deno sorry, the numerator value only changes in the three cases. Denominator value will remain same. So here in the second case, the heat rejection value is the 150. So find out here it is equivalent to zero. And the Clausius inequality says that cyclic integral of the delta Q by T, whenever it is equivalent to zero, we can say that it is a reversible process. In the third case, now consider the heat rejection as a 75. So now we are able to get 0.2664, that is a plus. So it is greater than zero. So greater than zero means it is impossible. It is violating the second law of thermodynamics. So that's why this amount of the heat rejection by that particular the heat engine is not at all possible. So like that we can say that this particular process is uh, not possible in the actual practice. So thank you one and all for uh, listening this important uh, lecture about this particular important one. So uh, thank you very much. That is the uh, entropy and Clausius inequalities are very, very important concepts. I hope you understood the concepts uh, very comfortably. We will meet you once again in the next class. So thank you.